Hello and welcome to a, at least three part episode where we will be taking this 17 inch late 2011 MacBook Pro and restoring it, replacing most of the case and uh, also upgrading it. So this should be a fun time and let's get started. So anyway guys, I'm Greg Rodkay of Rodkay Mods and welcome to part one of this series where we are going to be repairing this 17 inch MacBook Pro that I've had since early 2019 uh, that I got from Griffin right up in this video right up here. Um, and it is a very nice system uh, to a degree. Um, it's not in the best shape. And in today's episode, we're going to be mostly talking about what the plans are for this because I want to lay down the ground rules for the system before we get into it and so we're going to be talking about what's wrong with this system and what we're going to do to fix it and upgrade it and when I say it's going to be at least a three-part episode uh, series uh, it's probably going to be four or five parts if I can talk Colin Mister into doing his magic later on in the future. Um, so this may change drastically by the time I'm done. And what we're going to be doing uh, right now in this part is just explaining about where it came from and what it's all about and what's wrong with it and what we're going to be doing in part two and three. So what we have right here is my late 2011 MacBook Pro with a 2.4 gigahertz quad core i7 in it and um, four gigs of DDR3 and an 80 gig SATA one speed hard drive in it. Yeah, you're starting to see what the what we're going to be doing to this. This when I got it was in really bad shape and it still is as you can see here. It also had some GPU issues. And back in June of 2022, I was over at Colin Mester's, aka Dostu One, and we filmed a video of me fixing the GMUX on this. And I'm going to show you that video right now. All right, guys, so we're over at Colin's to flash this before I rebuild it and stuff. And um, I want to demonstrate to you an example of how you know if your chip is bad. And, uh, well, it's pretty obvious just from that alone, but when it starts booting, and it starts booting up like in the, for instance, El Capitan, it's going to just go white screen and do nothing. Now, I had this thing running, um, and it was in a soft uh, patch, uh, and last time we started it up, it, uh, it deleted the soft patch, so it's now white screening again, so... Yeah, that's, that's the example of what this is doing. And now we're going to try to fix it. And Colin's having me do it. It should be fun. All right, so first off, I've got to ground this out and plug it in at the same time to go into... PLT Reset L. PLT Reset L, which will prevent it from booting up, but give it power so we can flash it. And once the fans get up to full speed... Uh, it shouldn't reset itself. It's this one, right? You want... Yes. 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 Okay. So we have to touch that first. And we plug it in. And it does... There it is. I was about to say, and it does nothing. How long will this take? Usually it takes about 30 seconds or so. Okay. And as a quick note, you can flash while holding low, but the way we're doing it with the pogo pin adapter, um, it's kind of a pain to use both hands like that. So this way works most of the time as well. Well, now we're good, right? 
give it a little bit more time just to get the fans up to full speed. Should be good now. Pull that out. Maybe. There we go. So now I touch these pogo pins to these pads, and then we hit enter and flash. Oh. Yeah, it right, reset. Yeah. Well, let's try that again. Try it again. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to hold it. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, it's now. You got it in there good now. Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah. Here's the side. It has a blob of solder on it. I see that. Here. All right. One. Try this again. This does make it more challenging. You said we can do this while it's on yep. low, right? Yep. And enter. Stag. About 13 seconds. Ooh. Operation successful. So You're done. I'm done. Plug. Pull this back out. Poorly. There we go. Now we can flip it back over and see if it worked. All right, Colin, let's power up and see what happens. Well, it's not stripey. That's a good sign. Well, that's a quick SSD there. Mm -hmm. A lot better than that crappy hard drive I had, the JVry special hard drive. If you guys remember that, <laughs> yeah, it looks like it worked. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah, we just seized the three thousand. Awesome. It worked. Yeah. Cool. I didn't even know the brightness worked with, with that. Yep. That was a recent somewhat recent update awesome well there you go guys now let's uh get back to my place and uh rip this down and actually fix everything it's gonna be fun <laughs> all right we'll see you guys later and welcome back so yeah now this is a fully functional system uh now that the dedicated graphics are disabled but that causes some issues here because now it's um well, it never had a metal GPU to begin with, and the dedicated graphics that were on it, the HD 6000 series from ATI at the time, which was AMD and ATI, anyway, from them, uh, it, uh, it wasn't that great. It uh, ran really hot. It liked to overheat. It was pretty slow for what it was. And, well, the chips would eventually melt, quite literally they just kind of separate and fall apart. When that happens, these things won't boot. And uh, this one wouldn't. And it gave the stripes on it, as you can see in this video here. And it just didn't work. But um, now it does. But it's got HD 3000 Intel graphics in it, which aren't great. Um, but it will be plenty enough for what we need to do with it right now. So, in today's video, we're just talking about what we're doing with this thing. And what we're going to be doing is upgrading this thing and replacing all the case problem, problems on the case. Which translates to a complete case swap. And if you see in front of it, there's two different 17-inch MacBook Pros that I got from Jay Vry in this video right up here. 
And these 17-inch MacBook Pros are part systems. This one right here is a 2011, which uh, has a perfect case on it, but it is um, very dead. It's got no battery in it and no RAM. It's probably got a dead GPU, and that's probably why it's a part system. The logic board might be good for something in the future, though, so I will probably be keeping the logic board, but we're going to be using the whole bottom case in this system. But for the top case, I've got a 2010 17-inch with the anti-glare display that Jay also gave me. And this anti-glare display is going to be the top of this system. And uh, you guys voted because originally I was going to stick with the glass because I think the glass looks more modern. But I can't deny that the anti-glare display looks really good. And you guys wanted me to do it, so we're going to do it. We're going to be putting this anti-glare display on this system. So we'll be using the top part of this system and the bottom part of this system on this system and use the internals in this system to make one completely restored really nice looking system. So yeah, I am excited for this series to start and get going and you know in part two we will be actually redoing this and building it out of these three systems, combining them and making it work. And then part three we will be upgrading the battery, the SSD and RAM. Now I had the SSD and RAM but those ended up in my 27-inch iMac. And I'm not about to take that thing apart again just to take it apart again to do it back in the future. So I've got those parts on order. And I also figured out that the battery is still good in this, although it was flat and wouldn't start up until I plugged it in. But now it's working, as we can see. But this battery is very old. It's got 830 cycles on it. And uh, it's probably time to get a new one anyway. So we'll be doing that. Then if there's a part four, and this is where it's big. If we do part four, we'll first compare what the speed of this is. And then we'll have Colin Mister do his famous iBoff mods and make it into a 2012 model with the Ivory Bridge CPUs Intel Graphics HD 4000, all that. And we'll have the uh, PCI mod where we can have the eight times slot in the side and all that stuff. That'd be really fun. But right now, as of right now anyway, we're going to be doing this as a three-parter. But I want to do at least a four-parter uh, because I think that would make this really neat system. And we'll probably end up visiting it again in the future if we do the fourth part and make a fifth part just playing with it. And I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. But right now, let's get ready for part two. And we'll be doing the case swap and all that stuff. But um, still, that's it for today's episode where I just told you what we're going to be doing this system, with this system. And, um, yeah, part two is going to be where we get into the nitty-gritty stuff and actually get dirty and modify it and make it work better than it already is. Anyway, so that's the end of today's video, guys. Don't forget, I do now have a Patreon if you'd like to support me. There'll be a link at the end of the video in the description below. And we also have channel memberships. If you hit that Join button down there, you'll see behind-the-scenes stuff you don't see anywhere else. And for Patreon, you get to see these videos at least a day early, sometimes earlier. So if you'd like to support me even more, go and click those links, do what you need to do. I'd greatly appreciate it. But yeah, that's the end of today's video. I hope you guys are excited for what's coming up for the system. And this has been a Retke Mods video.